some chest beating, some heart beat. <laughs> we have a question about carbon versus alloy. I've done a many video about this. I'll do another one because this is always a popular topic. Carbon versus alloy. Do you really need a carbon bite? The answer is no. You don't need a carbon bite. I know plenty of gun riders who are just as fast on carbon as alloy. Now, not all carbon is the same, not all alloy is the same. So every, if you ever get dropped on a climb or dropped in a sprint or dropped on a TT or whatever, or someone on a carbon bike, you go, oh, I wish I had a carbon bike. No, 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 no. You, you didn't get dropped because your bike's made of alloy, all right? You didn't get dropped because your specialized tarmac wasn't an S-Works model. You didn't get dropped because you got Shimano Sora versus Shimano Dura Ace. You didn't get dropped because you got SRAM Apex versus SRAM, you know what I mean? It's, no, no, it's just marketing hot. Now, if you want to need any bling, then buy bling. Buy bling because you like it. Don't think you really need it to perform at a high level. Because you don't. Chris Froome could win the Tour de France on a Trekamonda ALR, alloy frame, or even Trek 1.1 with the latest Shimano R3000 saw. I guarantee he could. Put on some sort of lighter weight wheels. Tires are more important than the wheels. Put on some decent tires like a Continental GP4000S. Beautiful. So the whole thing is with this whole bike industry, it's like the shoe industry, it's everything. It's all about creating an illusion that you need the certain product. Now, if you want it, get it. I, I, I buy a lot of bike blend because I like stuff, but it's all about how much watch you're putting out, how much power you put out in the climb. It's not as, I mean, what's peculiar is important, but then people get too obsessed with weight. What really matters is your total wattage. If you're banging out the watts up the climb, then... You're going to be pretty dominating, aren't you? It's not about you. A carbon bike doesn't make you put out. If you're going to put out 300 watts, a carbon bike is going to make you put out another extra watt at all. All right, so <laughs> it's 18 percent stiff in the bottom bracket. We've got BBA, we've got BB right, we've got BB30, we've got BB press fit six seven. All, all these different. It, it doesn't matter, man. If you're pushing out the watts, you're dropping motherfuckers. Simple as that. So, I mean, it feels nice to ride a stiff bike, a responsive bike. The reality is, if you're dropping Watt Bomb, it doesn't fucking matter if your bike's under bamboo, alloy, carbon, steel, titanium. You're going to be launching my... I've dropped people on my steel bike. I drop people on a fucking, you know, one of those bike rental bikes. I drop people on my carbon bikes. It depends. You know, if you're racing at a pro level, where every single second counts, then I agree, every kilo matters. In the Tour de France, you know... To get those points to the yellow jersey, you need every kilo matters. Because it comes down to two seconds, you lose points. You lose time bonuses. So you need that. You need that. But otherwise, it doesn't really matter, man. So for the everyday rider, I've got a lot of audience. People on $1,000 bikes, $500 bikes. Maybe you've got a second-hand bike with 9-speed 105. As long as it fits you, and the tires are pumped up, and that derailleur hanger is straight, it's not bent, so it's like <laughs> clicking the gears. Your gears are sharp and shifting you. Lube your cables and your your inners, your cable housing. That's all clean and lubed and trimmed at the ends. That provides incredible shifting performance. So many people buy a basic watch, a saw, or whatever. They ride it for years and they upgrade to Ultegra Dura. It's like, oh wow, it's so much better. Most of the time, it's better because you've got new cables in there. You got new housing in there. The derailleur hanger is actually straight instead of bent because it fell over at the cafe. You loan your bike to a mate, or you put it in your car the wrong way down right side down, and the derailleur hanger got a bit bent, and the shifting's out of whack. So replace your cable housing and your innards before you even replace anything else. Make sure your derailleur hanger is straight. Do you need carbon? Is carbon a scam? I would say carbon is the biggest scam in the cycling industry. Now, a scam, as in, <laughs> if you want to get it, if it's a piece of art, uh, if you want a Pinarello or Colnago or some, all these other brands who are made for a few hundred bucks and sold for 5,000 pounds of frame set, whatever, then go out and get it. Nothing wrong with that. But don't think that you're going to turn into Chris Froome or Lance Armstrong. You've got to have the watts for that. And ain't the carbon bike. So, well, carbon, I think, is a fantastic material. You can, if you break carbon, you can fix it, you can repair it. That's really good for the environment. Alloy, you're going to recycle that. But carbon, you can fix it. So carbon, while it cracks easier, you can be fixed. So from an environmental, ecological standpoint, it is a little bit better like that. But at the end of the day, um, everything will break. Is carbon a scam? I would say carbon is the biggest scam out there because of how much it's sold for and people just like dribble over it. And, but it, when I say scam, it's like a first world problem scam, okay? Um, because I think bikes are great to buy. I do think it is crazy how much we pay for a bike. It's still a seven kilo bike compared to a car or a motorbike, whatever. But hey, not many other options, so we've got to do what we can do. But uh, it's carbon, alloy, 
It doesn't matter. What matters? Bike fit. Marking your seat height so it doesn't slip down. Get a copy of my cycling ebook. I put a link down below. During, I update it all the time. It's just recently uploaded. During Rogers Land Body Bible. If you want more information, if you're serious about it, get a copy of my ebooks. Cheap as fuck. All the best information I've given in the last 20 years. You just read an ebook. I mean, I wish I had that when I first started. Link down below. During Rogers Land Body Bible. What matters? Bike fit. Mark your measurements so nothing slips down so you can put it back to where it was. Tire pressure, at least 100 psi if you're on the road. And it depends on what cycling you're doing. But tire pressure is important. Tire choice is important. Get a power meter and learn how to pace and carb the fuck up. Water, hydration, sleep. They're the things that really make a difference. It's not if your bike was an S or an SL or an SLR or an SSSL or X 55 gram OCLV. No, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's an S-Works or an S-Works McLaren or an S-Works McLaren Special Edition, Sagan autographed whisker version. It doesn't matter. All right? So if you're putting out the what bombs, that's what matters. Sleep, water, sugar, bike fit, tire pressure. Yeah? It doesn't matter if it's carbon or alloy. End of the day, it does not matter.